Oh, good morning, everybody. It's very fresh. Very fresh. What are we up to today? <laughs> what are we up to on this episode? Let's talk, this is going to be a little different, you guys. I'll be the first one to tell you right now. This is not your typical Wild Wild West episode. This is going to be somewhat of a vlog, follow along. I mean, they're all vlogs, but more of a day in the life of follow along. What are we up to? Where are we going? Here, Fred, hand me your bag. You know, we could call this episode When Ranch Trucks Leave the Ranch. Where are we headed? Las Vegas. What? What's it known for, Las Vegas? Uh, bad things. Bad things. <laughs> so what's in Vegas? Nothing good. Okay, pull it out, top it off. Are you already topping off? You know about topping it off? Of course, you told me that. All these mountains there on the east side of the freeway that kind of stick up, and they're just covered with snow. Fresh snow from last night. All right, y'all, so Freddie let the cat out of the bag. Vegas bound, Vegas. Probably a town that I despise more than all others. You know, we went down there a year ago, Haley and I, to play some music, and it was just, it was just too much. Weed smoke, air, just, a, just a haze of pot smoke just flowing down. And anytime you step outdoors, you suddenly feel s strangely elevated. I got I got offered some crack down there on the, uh, apparently I look, I look like I uh, play in the part of a crack, uh, a partaker of the crackage, some illicit drugs. Uh, so we played some music down there, we got out and I remember thinking, I would never go back to Vegas. And not only would I never go to Vegas, one of the strangest things, and for those of you that live in Vegas that are watching this, you know what I'm talking about. I don't hate Vegas. I should say the strip. That little hurt is just like, wow, it's a lot going on down there. I remember thinking, what is wrong with all these people bringing their kids to the strip? Because there was children everywhere just also being elevated by the, uh, the haze that uh, drifted and wafted through the... Uh, through the streets of Vegas. And I remember thinking, who are these parents taking their kids to the strip? What's wrong with you? And uh, here we are headed to the strip with my child in tow. How did we get here? How did we get here? I'm gonna turn the camera over to one of your favorites who you haven't heard from in quite a while, Old Man Rooster. Okay, the reason for this trip to Vegas that my old college roommate from 54 years ago is being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and uh, going down there to support him in this huge honor. And, and you know, he was a, a first round draft pick and he played seven or eight years in the NFL and then he's been coaching for like 30 or 40 years in the NFL. And he just retired from coaching at Denver, and Freddie is a huge Denver Bronco fan, and uh, Tim Tebow and Reggie Bush are being inducted also at the same at the same ceremony. So we decided to just go down there and partake in the festivities. What college did you go to? Montana State. So it's a huge honor for the college, for the MSU also, to have someone inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Because Montana State is a tiny. Yeah, it's a small, smaller college. This is a rare honor for a, a smaller college. And so we're going down to, to uh, go to Bill Kohler's his name, a great guy. He's one of the few people I've stayed in touch with all 55 years since we were 17-year-old college freshmen. He won the Super Bowl. Yeah, he 
who was coaching Denver when they won the Super Bowl. He came up uh, to the ranch the year after that and uh, showed us his Super Bowl rings. And Hasn't this only been four or five? Four. So Freddie's got his little Bronco jersey on and a football. He's out in the yard there showing these football moves. And uh, I remember Bill saying, oh man, he could play for the Broncos right now. <laughs> <laughs> Here you have it, you guys. We're headed down to the uh, Aria, I believe it's pronounced. Hotel, convention, casino, etc., etc., etc. If you haven't been to Vegas before, there are these just mega monstrous hotel casinos that have essentially have their own shopping malls within each side, each of them. My hope is that in having to bring young Fred down, see, bringing young Freddy down. Fred, why are we bringing you down? Don't ask me. Freddie's coming down to be able to kind of see some of these NFL guys and these old legendary folks. And it's a guy's, kind of a guy's trip. And he is here as the third generation witness that Rooster is actually leaving the ranch during ranch season to go do something for himself. It's very rare, very rare, those kind of things. Anyway, Freddie, the rules are while you're on the strip is we're gonna keep a blindfold on you going to keep a, uh, a respirator on your nose, like a gas mask, to try to keep you level on the ground. There are sunglasses, just hold your elbow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, making a living in agriculture is increasingly more difficult all the time. It seems like there's more people against agriculture than for it, and it's just every year there's some new things, the air over there going, all right. So we're always trying to figure out some way to make it, to make our way. Since we're going to Vegas, Rooster kind of floated this idea. And uh, the other night we decided to go ahead and go with it. You know, we recently sh shipped and sold our calves. We're hoping for a little more money. So we decided to take the calf check to Vegas with us. I'm almost sure I can double that thing on the blackjack tables. Uh, our plan is go down there. We're taking a $20,000 pretty nice old pickup. Yeah. We're driving down in a $20,000 pickup and there's a good chance we'll come home in a $300,000 vehicle. Mm. Call the Greyhound bus. <laughs> Freddie's strategy in the back is a little different. Freddie has decided that he's probably better served to work on his homework, increase his educational abilities, and lean on that as a way to make a living. Fernal, what do you yes. think about In-N-Out Burger? Have you ever been there? Never? Do you know what it is? Uh, you know why they're called In-N-Out, Freddy? They're really good burgers. But uh, if you notice all the parking lots of these In-N-Outs, they've got a row of those porta potties Because they go in and they're super good, but they come out fast. <laughs> so you've got to have a, a battle plan. <laughs> Grandpa, where are the porta potties and there's this corner to the tips. <laughs> uh, all right, well that was Freddy's first, Freddy's first in and out burger experience. Yeah, he did great in and out, beautiful. <laughs> Maybe a little overrated. Okay. <laughs> we don't get them very often. See, up in Montana, we mostly get Burger King and McDonald's. That's pretty much it. All right, y'all, there's the haze. See the haze hanging over Vegas right there? That's the weed smoke. The devil's lettuce. Oh my goodness. So, had to get old Freddy out. <laughs> Freddy, you nailed it, man. <laughs> so the parking garage is like seven feet, three inches max. And that guy had to be pretty tight. Our little antenna would like ding off the little, all the, all the bars, you know, it's a seven foot three and it would go, boom. Oh. But the headache rack on this pickup sticks up a little. So we were just waiting for the crunch, but the crunch never came. So you ever done a parking garage in a one ton long bed crew cab pickup? If you haven't, I suggest you try it sometime. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that dent is not from driving today, if you were wondering. Hmm, the question of the day is, how do those footprints 
get up that high. Okay, Fred's good. Oh, do you think that's how they did it? Oh, Freddy put his stamp on Vegas. I could probably do it too. So. <laughs> we'll work for that for the next time. See, this is why I was worried about sending a rooster to Vegas. I thought it was a keyhole. <laughs> what did you smell, Fred? How do you describe this odor? It's kind of minty with a hint of skunk. <laughs> what in the technological world is this? Automatic curtains. I don't even know where we are. You lost, Fred? Yeah. <laughs> we're all, uh, we're all ready to go, razzle dazzle. Tell me what you think. Let's see how old Freddy Fred's doing. Freddy Fred. Come with me on pink brush. Freddy, looking good. And even old Roost over there getting ready. <laughs> Kids growing up, you guys. Kids growing up. <laughs> he did shave for the first time as well here a while ago. I don't even know what to do with my hair. Just like that, looks good. It's easy. I don't want it too straight. Extracted that greatness from me through his effort, through his energy. And he probably 
about the human being. He had to put in so much effort, so much energy. He had to be exhausted. <laughs> and I, I came around to it, it worked, and now I literally could not be more thankful and more grateful that Bill Fuller was ready for this my coach. It's a video. It's a video. Oh, good morning, everybody. We uh, we survived the evening. The Montanans survived. Anytime a Montanan survives an evening in Las Vegas, it's a good thing. Oh, that was a lot of fun. I'll talk a little more about that later. Right now, we're uh, where are we at, Fred? Uh, on the house. <laughs> oh, baby. Never heard of it. That's a good thing, usually. Yeah. So this is just some local place out here in Henderson. Some of you might have been here. Anyway, a lot of cars here. We're on our way out to uh, Hoover Dam. We're going to go check out the dam. Ooh. This little number is called the kitchen sink. Oh, baby. Fred, what'd you go with? Taco omelet. Taco. And roost? Chicken fried steak omelet. Classic trucker, classic trucker breakfast right there. I would say that the omelet house here in Henderson, Nevada is definitely a to-do on your breakfast list. Man, oh man, that was good. I will tell you guys, I'm getting really good parking garages. With <laughs> a one-ton pickup, real good. We got a good system worked down where I back into the slot Oh, Freddy Man Fred guides me. He's been getting me within. Oh, yeah. And Rooster taught us the best reason to park close is because why? No one can seal that ball off your trailer hitch. Kind of scary. Don't drop your phone. <laughs> That'd be the end of YouTube. Yep. Come on, Fern. He's out there and he's taking pictures right now. And he's over on the left and his right hand hit her. The guy hits it and hits it through his legs. It was unbelievable. And then he's over, he goes over to the other side and he's over and I keep that. It's morning time. It's time to get back, get back up north, and get back home. Fred, what do you think? I think if I was here for like two more days, I'd probably not like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a wonderful weekend or a few days. So fun to reconnect with some old college friends I haven't seen in over 50 years. 
and to uh, be here, just have Bill honored like he was. It was just awesome. All in all, you guys, it was a good time. I was worried about, uh, I'll be honest, I was worried about bringing Freddie along. Um, as I maybe perhaps mentioned before, I was in Vegas a year ago, and the two things that I was tired of was Vegas and the thought that who would ever bring kids here to wander around. So to uh, kind of guard that, uh, we kind of stuck to the hotel. I was just careful about where I went with Freddie and when we went, and um, we did okay. We didn't run into any weird things uh, that I didn't want him to have to deal with or remember uh, at this stage in his life. So uh, I guess we're headed back up home. It was uh, it was really worth it to come down, you guys. Um, Dad he really doesn't do... Like, Rooster loves to, to have fun, loves to party, loves to, you know, spontaneously, yeah, let's go to the music show, let's, let's do this, let's jump in, let's go to things around Montana. So to do, to do things like... Let's go to Vegas for three days and leave the ranch. And uh, it really says a lot about his uh, love for Bill, you know, his old friend. And uh, pretty cool. So knowing that Rooster wanted to go, yeah, I've missed a few truck trips while I've been gone. But getting to go with Rooster, spend that time with him, and as importantly or more importantly, uh, be able to go spend some one-on-one -on -one time with uh, Weed Man Weeds as he's growing up and just be able to kind of have some man-to-man -man time, which you don't get very often in this, you know, in this kind of situation. You can, you can just feel that it was good. Um, it was good. So we're going uh, to pile back in the pickup. It's a thousand miles back home. Nothing for an old trucker. We should be back early in the morning to go. I've got a load of cattle to go to Kansas here day after tomorrow, so... We better get on back, get settled back in, and see what the next adventure brings.